Shrinkage and its causes can be broken down into two different types, construction shrinkage and processing shrinkage. This means that shrinkage is affected both by the construction parameters of the fabric and by the forces applied in dyeing and finishing processes. Sewing and finishing processes at the apparel manufacturing facility also impact shrinkage. After cotton fabric is constructed on a knitting machine or weaving loom, it has inherent characteristics based solely on the construction variables used. These characteristics or conditions are referred to as the gray or gray delivered state. Gray goods can be tested for various specifications including shrinkage. The type of shrinkage measured at this point is known as construction shrinkage. Construction shrinkage is defined as the amount of dimensional change in a fabric based solely on the construction variables used to create the fabric. It's measured before dyeing and finishing processes. While all the processing techniques in a dyeing and finishing plant and in an apparel manufacturing operation affect the dimensions of a product, some processes have more impact than others. These steps create processing shrinkage, which can be defined as the dimensional change that a process adds to or removes from the construction shrinkage of a fabric. Length and width dimensions are both affected, and the fabric may be either stretched or consolidated. Most often the length is stretched and the width is reduced during wet processing. Some of this shrinkage is composed of elastic shrinkage and can be easily recovered, while some of the change in dimensions may not be recovered because the elastic limits of the fabric have been exceeded. Elastic shrinkage is defined as a change in dimensions of a fabric because of the ability of the fabric to freely relax from tensions experienced during construction and other processing. For example, tensions during the formation of the knitted loop caused by the takedown and the spreader mechanisms on a knitting machine are stresses that induce elastic shrinkage in cotton knit goods. This elastic shrinkage becomes part of the overall construction shrinkage. Transporting fabric in bleaching and dyeing machines, as well as other finishing operations, will also cause elastic shrinkage, which would be part of the normal processing shrinkage. Normally, the recovery from elastic stresses is easy to achieve when these stresses are relieved, especially in tensionless wetting and drying mediums. As a result of these process stresses, the dimensions of gray fabrics directly off the knitting machines are not relative. If the same gray goods are subjected to two different processes of varying stress, one low and the other high, then the resultant dimensions can be different. The higher the stress, the more elongated the fabric and the greater the potential for shrinkage. In today's modern finishing plants, various methods are used in an attempt to overcome processing shrinkage and reduce construction shrinkage. These methods include relaxation drying, compaction, and or chemical processes. Relaxation drying and compaction are examples of consolidation shrinkage. Shrinkage occurs during relaxation drying as a result of de-swelling of the cotton fiber and yarn assembly while applying unrestricted agitation. Compaction is a mechanical effect gained by forcing the fabric structure to compact upon itself. The more processes of these types the mill can apply, along with reduced linear stress in processing, then the lower and more consistent the amount of shrinkage. Just as gray and finished fabric dimensions can be measured, the effect of each processing step on fabric shrinkage can also be determined. Benchmarks for measuring dimensional change can be applied on gray goods and measured at each point during processing, allowing the finisher to detect and correct distortion problems that may occur. For example, if the extraction step is shown to stretch the length of the fabric by significant amounts, then the finisher can adjust the machinery to lower the forces applied in this process, thereby reducing distortion and lowering shrinkage. By being able to identify the processes that add to shrinkage, cost savings and improved shrinkage performance can be realized. Drying shrinkage is defined as the dimensional change in a fabric when de-swelling of fiber, yarn, and construction occurs during tensionless drying. The structure shrinks upon itself as a result of the physics of drying. The importance of the swelling mechanism is significant. As the fabric wets out without tension, Swelling of the fibers and subsequently swelling of the yarns and the fabric occurs. 
Upon swelling, the crimp in the yarn loops increases. In effect, the loops in the knitted structure try to assume a more relaxed state. Here the loop has a more round configuration. The rounding of the loop results in a shortening and relaxation of the fabric. Most shrinking testing methods use the swelling and deswelling phenomena and some form of mechanical action. The American Association of Textile Chemists and Colorists developed a widely used testing method. Test method 135, called Dimensional Changes in Automatic Home Laundering of Woven and Knit Fabrics, simulates home laundering so that the test gives meaningful data. This test uses a washing machine to wet out and swell the fabric under tensionless conditions. After washing, a tumble dryer is used to apply energy in the form of mechanical tumbling with heat to deswell and fully relax the fabric and the garment. Tumble drying without restrictions is a form of mechanical compression or consolidation and allows for maximum drying shrinkage to take place. The loop on the left is elongated in the length direction and would exhibit high length shrinkage as compared to the shorter loop on the right. After the fabric shrinks due to the swelling and deswelling under tensionless conditions and mechanical action, the loop assumes a rounded shape. Therefore, the loop on the left has experienced greater shrinkage. When the loops deswell in drying, they're trying to assume the more round configuration. Drying shrinkage is normally removed only by large amounts of energy as opposed to low amounts of energy needed to remove elastic shrinkage. 